Hello everyone and welcome back to another 5M Master Series. Today we're going to be talking about how to lock doors like a boss in 5M. And this video is actually based on a post that I wrote on the 5M forums back in 2021. So if you want to check out the original forum post that I wrote about the these natives, uh, I will have that linked down in the description. But the basics of what we're going to be doing today are writing a better door locking script for 5M. So I see a lot of door lock scripts out there that rely on like the freeze entity position natives and like forcing headings in certain directions. And it's just really not pretty and it's certainly not performant. It's a massive resource hog. Fortunately, since 2021, when I wrote that blog post, I've seen better resources come out that utilize door system, which is what we're going to be doing today. But unfortunately, there's still a lot of servers out there that are using this kind of old antiquated way of locking doors when there is a really great door locking system built right into 5M. So let's uh, dive right in and learn how to lock doors like a boss. And the first thing that we need to do is identify a door for our script here. And uh, for me, I'm at the vanilla Mission Row Police Department and I'm going to use this locker room door right here. And we're gonna need to jot down a little bit of information about this door. Um, you're going to need the model hash of the door and the coordinates. Now there are a number of ways to do this. You could jump into CodeWalker and grab it there. Um, I'm a big fan of Dimicam. I use that, that uh, resource a lot in my development, but we're gonna keep things really simple. There's a really easy to use resource called IDGun uh, that we're going to use. I'll have this link down in the description, but all I have to do is do slash IDGun grab a weapon and point my weapon at a prop and it tells me everything I need to know about it down there by my mini map. And like you can see, we can point this at the fire extinguisher. We can point this as the CCTV camera, but obviously we care about the door. And you see it gives us our coordinates, heading and hash. And we care about the coordinates and the hash here. So I'm just going to jot this down in my client script for later. I'll just kind of arrange things so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, our coordinates are a vector three. And then our model is V underscore ILEV underscore PH underscore Gendor 004. All right, so we have that down. Let's talk about the natives that we're going to be using today. And really there's, there's only two of them. Um, we have some bonus natives that we'll talk about at the end that you might wanna put into practice in your server. But as far as the basic door lock system goes, so we got two of them. And the first one is add door to system. And this is how we register all of the doors that we are going to be managing. The, the lock state for basically telling uh, GTA, like, hey, we're going to be managing if this door is locked or unlocked. There's a couple parameters here. We'll go through them one by one. The first is door hash. And at first glance, you might think this is like the hash of the door model. It is not. This is basically a unique identifier that we use to identify the door when we call the other door system natives. And this is something we get to make up. We can call it whatever we want as long as it's unique. So every single door in your script has a different hash. And for me, for today, I'm going to use police underscore one for my door hash, but you can call yours whatever makes sense for you. Now, the second parameter is the one that you're probably thinking it would be, which is model hash. That one is the hash of the door model. So our ILEV PH Gen door 004. And then the third, fourth, and fifth parameters are our X, Y, and Z coordinates of the door. And then finally, we have P5 script door and is local, which for us don't matter. We're just going to ignore them. So now that we have a door registered, how do we lock or unlock a door? And the native for that is door system set door state. And this is really simple. Uh, the first parameter is the door hash. Once again, that's that unique hash that we came up with for each of our doors. And then the second parameter is the state. Now there's uh, seven states in total. The only two that we care about are zero for unlocked and one for locked. And that's it, that's, that's all the natives there are. So let's dive into the code and start writing some stuff out here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just in a thread here, uh, call add door to system. And for my hash, like I mentioned, I'm gonna call mine police one. Note that I'm using backticks here uh, to turn this into a hash automatically. And then the second parameter is the model hash. Once again, we're gonna wrap that in backticks. And then the third, fourth, and fifth parameters are the coordinates. If we just pass in a vector three here, 5M will unpack it for us. And that's all we need to register our door. So for locking, let's create a command and I'm just gonna call it door. And then in here, we wanna do door system set door state. 
And the first parameter is going to be our hash that we created, police one, remember to keep that in back ticks. And then the second parameter is going to be zero for unlocked or one for locked. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take the first argument of the command and convert it to a number. So if I do slash door zero, it unlocks. If I do slash door one, it locks. And with that, let's restart our resource and see what we've got. And I'm just gonna do slash ID gun to get rid of that for now. And if we walk through our door, you can see it's unlocked, nothing special. If we do slash door and then one, this should lock the door. And just like that, I'm locked out or locked in as it were. And then if I do slash door zero, it should unlock the door and through we can go. Now, we're going to take a quick detour to show you the true power of the door lock system because this is what blew me away when I first saw the, the door locking system. Now, a couple things to note, we're working in a client script right now. So this is all client side. And if I go really far away, so I'm gonna go all the way to the pier, right? So that door is definitely unloaded. My client knows nothing about it. But if I call door one to lock the door and then go back, you will see the door is locked. And this is really powerful because that means we don't need to be near the door to set its lock or unlock state, which means we don't need to run any threads to do that. This is a completely threadless system, which is really, really powerful. When a player first loads into the server, we can set all of the doors, we can register all of the doors regardless of where they are in the world, and we can set whatever their current state is and then just update that door by door as different doors change and we don't have to be continually running threads to do that. So that's really, really powerful. And we're done. So with 10 lines of code, we got some comments here. If we clean up the comments, with seven lines of code, we've created a door lock. Now, obviously this is pretty basic. Uh, so let's take some time and kind of flesh this out and maybe make it just a little bit more advanced, maybe be able to do multiple doors. And we'll also handle the, the player you know, connecting and things like that. So good time to talk about how my resource is laid out. I have a client folder with a client script, a server folder with a server script, a config script, and then my manifest. So I have server scripts, my config file, and then uh, my server inside of my server folder, client scripts, the same thing, config, and then client inside of client. And this is actually a template I use all the time for just spinning up a new script. And what we're gonna do is kind of take this and move it into our config. Uh, so we're gonna set this up so we can handle multiple doors. And what I'm gonna do is just define a variable called config and then under that, uh, uh, config will be a table with a table inside of that with a key of doors. And then this will be a table of doors, lots of tables. Uh, this is a pretty standard way that I set up a lot of my configs. Um, and then I'm for the keys, I'm just going to use the name of the door. So police underscore one for this. And this will be a table and we're gonna have a couple things here. We're gonna have door hash, model hash, coordinates, and locked. So let's go through these. The door hash will of course be police underscore one. Remember these are in back ticks for a hash. The model hash will be the hash of the doors model. Uh, once again, remember in back ticks, so we're getting hashes out of this. Coordinates will be the vector three coordinates. And then locked will be either zero for unlocked or true or one for locked. And this will be kind of the default state when the server starts up. Now, before we move on, I am going to be using global state to share state between the server and the client. So if you're not familiar with state bags yet, I do have a master series video on state bags. Be sure to go back and watch the state bags master series video first. So you're kind of familiar with what I'm doing here. Let's dive into our server script. And the first thing I need to do is initialize that state bag, right? So I'm going to put this into a thread and all we're gonna do is say global state.doors is equal to config.doors. Really simple, just get that initialized and get it in there. And then the other thing that we're going to do is move our door command from the client to the server. So here we will register command door and then I'm gonna change a couple things here. I'm gonna just set everything up in variables to make it easier. And the, the signature for our command is going to look something like this. So the first parameter is going to be the name of the door. And then the second parameter is going to be one for locked or zero for unlocked. So I'll define this first variable and we'll just call it door name is gonna be equal to args one. And then lock state is going to be equal to args two. And we do need to uh, cast this to a number as before. 
And then the other thing I'm going to do is pull the global state back out into a variable called doors. Now what I'm going to do is add some validation here. And the first validation we're going to do is the door name. So we will say if not door name. So if the door name hasn't been provided or not uh, doors door name, then uh, return. So we'll just bail out if the door name uh, doesn't wasn't passed in or if we don't find it in our doors state. And then likewise, uh, if we don't have a lock state or if lock state is not equal to zero and it's not equal to one, then we will just bail out early. And assuming those checks pass, what we will do is just call doors door name dot locked is equal to our new lock state. We will put that back in our global state by just assigning it like so. And then we'll also trigger a client event called ch underscore doors update. We'll send this event to everyone. We'll provide the door name and the lock state. So why are we doing these two things? So we're putting it back into the global state because this is how a client who connects to the server for the very first time, or like, you know, just when a client connects to the server, this is how they'll get the current state of all the doors. And then we trigger the client event to let any clients that are already connected know that, hey, a door has been locked or unlocked. Now, if we switch back to the client side, this thread is going to be a little bit different. And the first thing we're gonna do is just pull our doors out of global state here and bail if they don't exist for some unknown reason. And then for each door, we need to add it to the door system. So let's add door to system and it'll be v.name uh, well, let's see, what do we call it here? Door hash and then, yeah, so v.door hash, v.model hash, v.coordinates. And then of course we wanna set the default state as well. So we will call door system set door state v.door hash and v.locked. And then we can clean this old code up. And now when this script starts or when a player connects to the server, we will register all of the doors and set their current states. Just add a comment up here, make sure my code stays nice and clean. And then down here, we need to handle our events. So we'll call register net event, ch underscore doors uh, update. And then this receives a door name and a lock state. And then this is really simple. All we have to do is call door system set door state. Now remember we need to get the hash and this door name is basically the key out of our config. So what we can do is just say config.doors door name dot door hash and then the lock state that we received from the event. And this should be all we need. So if we restart our resource here, and hopefully we don't get any script errors anywhere, check on our door and it's currently unlocked. If we call slash door and this is police underscore one and then one to lock, our door is locked. And if we call zero, it unlocks. Now, what if we wanted to add more doors to this system? Well, that's really simple. So let's see, does this door open? This door opens up as well, so we can use this door. I'll turn back on ID gun and just grab this door and we can add it to our config. Kind of arrange things here so I can see it. Copy this entire table, duplicate it. Don't forget our comma. We'll call this police underscore two. And this is VILEV RC door two. And don't forget our coordinates of 452.6248, negative 987.3626, and 30.8393. And now if we restart our script, this door should be in the system as well. And if we call slash door, Police to one to lock. Now our door is locked. And remember, uh, let me just unlock this and unlock that. And remember that we can do this from anywhere in the world. So if we go all the way over here and then call lock on uh, door two, come back in and door two is locked, perfect. So remember, right now, door two is locked. What happens if we disconnect from the server and reconnect? All right, just reconnected, haven't called anything, haven't changed anything. Let's go check on our door. Remember when we left, uh, I believe the outside door was unlocked and the inside door was locked. And unlocked and locked. 
So you can see the total power of this because we don't have any threads running. Like this is just a thread that initializes and then dies off. We don't have any like zero tick threads running in our code anywhere. This is a completely threadless door locking system. So you get ultimate performance out of this and it's super reliable. I've never had this fail on me or do any kind of weird stuff. And as promised, we do have a couple bonus natives that we're going to talk about. Now there are quite a few different natives related to the door system. If you just search the 5M native docs for door system, you'll see most of them. Um, there's some stuff related to automatic doors. So like bowlers or the sliding doors that you find at like pillbox that you can kind of research and see how those work. But the two that we're going to kind of talk about as bonus natives here is door system set hold open and door system set open ratio. So door system set hold open just takes two parameters. The first one is the door hash and the second is a toggle which is just true or false to hold the door open. And then the second door system set open ratio actually forces the door to kind of uh, stay in a specific position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna write some client side commands here to demonstrate these. And the first one is just gonna be a hold open command. I'm not gonna go in depth with what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of writing these out as an example of how these natives work. All right, so let's see what happens if we call that hold open with true. Now what you'll see is the door doesn't swing shut automatically. It kind of stays wherever you leave it at. It doesn't kind of like spring back into place. And then if we call it with false, you'll see it just, next time it gets bumped, it just kind of closes back and starts behaving how you would expect it to. And then the next native is the open ratio. So I'll just write a command open ratio and we'll call door system set open ratio, give it our door name hash, uh, and then a float between negative one and positive one. And then this one, you do need to pass in the final two parameters as true. Now, if we restart the resource, and we call slash open ratio, you can see it swings the door open to, in this case, 50%, 0 0.5. And when we walk through it, it always kind of bounces back to that same spot. And we could do this in the other direction too. We could change this to negative 0 0.5. And then if we call open ratio, you'll see it kind of sticks this direction. And we could go all the way to like uh, negative 1.0 and see what that looks like. And now it is all the way open. And you can still, when it's all the way open like this, it becomes hard to bump or change. So you can almost lock a door open like this. And with those bonus natives out of the way, I think that concludes this video. So hopefully you learned something. Like I mentioned, uh, the forum post that I wrote back in 2021 is linked down below. There's actually a resource you can download there to play with this uh, yourself. I also have a link to ID gun down in the description and of course a link to my discord. There's always interesting stuff happening there. So be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment with what, uh, what you plan on using the door system for. Don't forget to join the discord and we will see you in the next video.